Hello everyone. Today I will talk about the Green's function for wave equation. So the main reference for this is from Brown 13.2 and Tom 6.1.2. So the first question that what is Green's function and what will we use Green's function for? The answer is that the Green's function is used to solve the partial differential equation. For example, if we have a partial differential equation here, the D operate on um, fx give you the rho x. D is a linear partial differential partial differential operator. So if we want to solve this equation, um, we can build a green function. So we can build a function like this. If we know a green function gx x naught such that the operator operates on the green function give you a delta function. And then we can write original the original function as the integral of a green function times the right term of this function plus an arbitrary solution to the homogeneous equation. So that is how we use the green function for. So for one partial equation, we just built a green function and this equation and we solve the green function and then we put it back into the integral to get the original function. The proof to this is uh, simple. We just put it back to this equation. So the d operates on f is equal to d operates on this term. It should be zero. And d operates on the integral because d, we put the operator into the integral. The d will operate only on the green function. And this will become the delta function. The integral of the delta function times this function will give you the root x. So now we have we know about this. We can look at into um, two examples. The first example is a Poisson equation. The Poisson equation is for the stationary electric source. So if we have a stationary electric source, it will generate static electrical field. And the function is this, it is an inhomogeneous Naples equation. To solve this equation, we built a green function like this. And the solution to this is known to us. So we have the solution right in here. The g x x naught is equal to the minus one over four pi times the absolute x minus x naught. So we can solve the original function. So the potential should equal to the arbitrary solution to the Laplace equation um, plus the integral. So for the Poisson equation, it is simple. Um, and the second example, let's look at the Helmholtz equation. The Helmholtz equation is something like this. So now the charge is not independent of time. So the charge is dependent on both space and time. So we can do a Fourier transformation to remove its dependence on time. So the potential can be written like the integral of this and the, and the Fourier transformation for the potential is like this. And we put the Fourier transformation back to the equation. We, we can get this function. If there is no dis dispersion, the k square is equal to omega square over c square, and the, we get this function. To solve the to solve this function, we build the green function like this, and the solution to this is known to us. So there are so there are two solutions we care about. The first one is g plus. So it is minus exponential this term over four pi times the absolute x minus x naught, and also the g minus. The difference between them is the sign here. So now we have the green function. We can we can now can solve the Fourier transformation of the potential. So the Fourier transformation of the potential is the integral of the Fourier, Fourier transformation of the charge density and the green function. So once we know the free of the potential, we can we can calculate the original potential equation potential. 
So we do that for it. We do that for a automation to this term, and then we write it into integrals. And then the time term can be written like this. Can be written like this. And we and the for a automation will become this term. So we become the row. So become the row x not t minus the absolute x minus x not over c. So now we can now we solve this equation and we write the potential into an integral of the charge density. And we can and we denote this time term as the t retard. So we, so the reason why we call it retard is because the time is smaller than our current time. That means it is, it is in the past. So this equation suggests that the potential is equal to the integral of the charge density in the past. So if we and if we use the um, g minus, we go over all the same things, um, the same to the g plus. We can so we can get this integral. The difference between these two, this two is that the sign here is is plus, is not and not minus. And we denote this time term as t advance. So we write t advance as t plus this term. So why we call it advance? That is because not t is in advance of our current time. So it is in the future. So and then in this integral, the potential is equal to the integral of the charge density in the future. So now let's um proceed to the wave equations. The Green's function for the wave equations, so our, the wave equations can be written like this. So it can be written like the derivative of the field strength tensor and the um, four vector of the current density. And if we expand it, we get this, we get this. And if we apply the Lorentz gauge, so it will become like, like this. And we write it into uh, this format. So this is the wave equation we want to solve. So if we want to solve this equation, we want to build a green function like this. Now the green function is a um, function of the space, time, the space naught and time naught. And the right term will become the delta um, x minus x naught times the delta t minus t naught. So it, that is um, the delta of the space times the delta of the function or delta of the time. And due to the translation invariance in space and time, we can write the green function into this, this kind of format. And if we suppose x not is zero and t not is zero, we can write it like this. So that this can simplify our calculation. And we do the Fourier transformation of the green function. So we can write it like like this. And we put it back into this partial differential equation. We will get something. Um, so we can get something like this. So for this one, the operator can be can go into the integral, and it will only operate on this term, and the and the oper operation can be easily calculated like this. So this is the the latter term of the of this equation, and for the right term of this equation, the delta space times delta delta time can be also be written can be also written as their uh, for a transformation, and then we remove the integral. We will get we will get this um, solution. So the for a transformation of green function is equal to the minus one over k square minus omega square over um, c square. And then our original green function. We just do a for a to this term, so it will be written like this integral. To calculate this integral, so there are one things, one problem here because for the for this term, it has two poles here. 
if we, if we want to calculate the integral, we will use the knowledge from the complex um, the complex functions. So if you want to see how the integral can be calculated, you can refer to the Tom 6.1.2. And then we can get the, the G plus and G minus the two green function. And similar to the Helm-Holmes equations, the two terms here, they have different signs. And for this, it's similar to the T retard, and for this, it's similar to the T advance. And now we have the explicit format of the green function. We can put it back into the integral to calculate um, the, wave, the wave equation. So that's what I have.